Welcome to the virtual worship service for the Church at Bowie and the Winning Souls Evangelistic Church under the leadership of our pastor, Dr. Ian Edwards. We are so glad you chose to worship with us today. Mark 16 and 15 charges us to proclaim the gospel to the whole world. Our virtual live stream allows us to fulfill that commission. Please, Take a moment to invite someone or share this live stream on your page. We invite you to fellowship in the comments section and encourage first time viewers to raise a hand so we can greet you in love. We hope that you are encouraged by today's message. Now join us as we transition into praise and worship. Yes, yes. 
my refuge. He is the rock on which I stand. And he is my fortress. My God he is my light. Holds the oceans in his hands. There's nothing my God cannot do. There's nothing my God cannot do. There's nothing our God cannot do. Yes, Lord Jesus. There is nothing our God cannot do. Our God is a defender. He's strong. He's mighty. There is absolutely nothing. All right, everyone, it's offering time. It is time for us to give to the Father what is already His. We truly appreciate all that you do in your giving. It is because of your faithful, consistent, and committed giving that we at Winning Souls Evangelistic Church and the Church of Bowie are able to do what we do in our respective communities. If you are a member or attend Winning Souls Evangelistic Church in Pasadena, Maryland, Anne Arundel County, when you see the information on the screen, please give there. If you are a member or visit at the Church of Bowie in Bowie, Maryland, Prince George County, when you see their information on the screen, please give there. We know that God loves a cheerful giver, so put a smile on your face and give whatever God has purpose in your heart. We love you and we greatly appreciate everything that you do. Praise the Lord, everybody. Do you know what today is? Oh, it's a very special day. Let me tell you. So today we're going to celebrate someone that's near and dear to this ministry, both at Winning Souls and the church at Bowie. She's someone very special. Do you know who I'm talking about? Let me describe her to you. She's anointed. She's appointed. She prays for us when we don't even know it. She always has a warm smile and a big hug to give. She embraces the youth ministry, the dance ministry, even the ushers, all the way down to the ministerial staff. Did you take a guess yet? Go ahead, take one guess. Mmm, that's a good guess, but nope, that's not what we're talking about today. However, we are celebrating someone special. First Lady Nicola Edwards. We just wanted to take this moment to thank you, First Lady, for being the woman of integrity, of dignity, of honor, and walking under God's grace and favor. So right now, Winning Souls and Church of Bowie, let's take a moment to give our First Lady a, a, just a round of applause. Go ahead, you can clap it up. First Lady, we love you. Thank you for being the backbone. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for just always having the, the strength and the courage to go forward. So today we just want to take this opportunity to give both campuses an opportunity to sow back into you, to show you love the way that you show us unconditional love. So you see her handle at the bottom. Let's go ahead and be a blessing to First Lady. She does so much in the background that we don't even know about. And she also supports who? The best pastor ever. 
That's right, our very own Dr. Ian Edwards. So let's be a support, let's love her, let's encourage her and pour back into her. We thank you, we love you, and welcome back. I want to encourage you that our God is a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He will never fail you. Come on, right there where you are, lift your hands, open up your heart and receive God. Father, we love you. We honor you. We bless your name. Yes, God. You are here. Moving in this place, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, turn the lives around, I worship you, I worship you. I know you to be a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I know you to be a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, lift it up right there. Say, way make. Come on, declare who he is, yeah. My God. You are here, moving in this place. We worship you. We worship you. You are here, turning lives around. We worship you. We worship you. And we say My God Come on, somebody lift it up right there She way maker Miracle worker Say my God Y'all got it, come on 
Come on, lift it up right there. Say, way maker. Promise keeper. Say, my God. Lift your voice right there. Say, way maker. Yeah. Good morning and happy Sunday, everyone. It's good to see you all virtually. I hope everybody's being safe. I hope everybody's uh, being healthy, wearing your mask, doing what you got to do to get your immune system up. And yo, man, it's great to be back. Um, I had a good month off in August. Uh, me and my wife celebrated 20 years of marriage. And um, with that, I want to congratulate anyone um, that had an anniversary in the month of August or if you celebrated a birthday or uh, one of our members, uh, our couples at the cab celebrated the birth of a baby. But whatever it is, um, we celebrate you um, for the month of August the same way me and my wife were able to celebrate uh, 20 years of marriage. So it's been great. Shout out to the ministers that preach the word for those five weeks. Make sure y'all clap them up, show them some love. And for everybody that participated, whatever you did ministry wise to keep us uh, effective um, during the month of August and continue to keep us effective. And we certainly want to thank you uh, all for that. So um, I'm excited and glad to be back. If you haven't already, um, hit the share button, start a watch party. Um, just let somebody know, uh, you know, what God is doing in the life of our church. And um, I want to get right to our uh, um, message and our word for uh, today. Um, before I do that, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time together in your word. We thank you for um, your people. Father, it's, our climate is crazy. So much going on in our country and in our world and our communities. Father, we need you like never before. Father God, God, touch those that are grieving the loss of loved ones. Touch those that are sick, that they will be healed. Touch those that are in financial distress, relational distress, spiritual 
spiritual distress, whatever it is, God, God, we know that you have the power um, in your hand, Father God, to um, provide healing and deliverance and restoration in all of those areas. So we uh, we we seek your face now, Father, and we just ask you know just for your grace and for your mercy. And we thank you so much. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. Um, I'm in a new series um, beginning this month, and this series is called Push. It's called Push. And the reason why this came to mind, I was uh, as I was on sabbatical, I started thinking about um, what was a painful time. I mean, because it's a painful time now, but what was a painful time in, in our life, something that I uh, personally experienced where on the other side of that pain, the promise was still there something that we had planned for, something that um, you know, had really wanted or me and my family really wanted, a time in our life that we really had to push through and see, uh, see the promise uh, be fulfilled in our life. And uh, you mother is going to know something about this. So I immediately thought about um, when my, my last child was born, Imani, and, uh, you know, you know, we we planned for this pregnancy. We, we you know, we made sure that my wife got off the pill. So we did all this planning on the front end. You start thinking about all the items that we purchase, a baby shower, all of this to plan for this beautiful baby. You know, seeing the pictures, you know, you know, looking at the sonogram and everything, you know, listening to the heartbeat, all of these these beautiful things leading up to Imani being born. But when it was time for Monty to be born, uh, my wife went from being in a little pain to a lot of pain. And I, and I know she was in a lot of pain because I remember when she was she was on the bed and I remember when she squeezed my hand really, really, really hard. The doctors didn't tell her to relax. The doctors didn't say, uh, take it easy. The doctors didn't allow her to get up and just run out the room. All that we had prepared for, all that we anticipated, all that we were happy about, that we had set goals for, envisioned for, was, was right on the other side of my wife pushing through some of the most excru excruciating pain that she would ever experience. And so, so again, uh, uh, my wife, she had to push and she had to push, but it wasn't but a few pushes away that Amani came out. And today Amani's, you know, healthy young girl. She's, 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 she's everything that we could ever want in a child. Could you imagine during the time that my wife felt that pain that she, she would have just clammed up or I don't want to do it anymore. Or, uh, uh, you know, she would have just ran out the room or said, no, just let it stay. Just let it be. And I'm going to tell you what, brothers and sisters, the way this year has been going on, it almost makes you just say like, man, like, is there anything else left to push for? Like, we feel like our, our strength has been zapped. Uh, we feel weak by so many things that are going on. And my encouragement for us um, in this series is for us to continue to push because just like me and my wife had planned some things, been working on some things, put some things in place and had some goals. I believe that all that we strategized for in 2019, all that we, we declared and prophesied and spoke to is on the other side of us pushing through this pain. I can't let you all off the hook. I can't let you run away from it. I can't let you throw in the towel. I can't let your relationships go sour. Your business plans go sour. Your growth in God just become apathetic. I can't let you do it because I'm your pastor. And guess what? This pandemic has hit all of us. So I'm asking you to push because I got to push myself, right? And so I believe that all that God has for us, all that we desire, all that we want to do, whatever we're seeing is on the other side of a push. And I know that if we push that we're going to reach everything that God has for us. When Pastor Edwards, I have no idea. Like, yo, I'm not even going to profit a lot to you. I can get you to give me a little money and I can have a word from the Lord. I ain't got that word. I, I don't know when we're going to come out of this. I don't know when you're going to see everything God has for you. But I do know you won't get it just sitting still. You won't get it just complaining. You won't get it just crying. And it's all right to complain and to cry. But you know what? Why not complain and cry and push at the same time? Is that good, everyone? So I want to encourage us this month to push. 
and I'm going to be preaching from 1 Samuel chapter 30. I'm going to preach uh, verses 6, 7, 8, and 9, I believe, over the next four weeks. I'm going to stay right here so I can keep us very focused and keep us very tight. But I want us to go to 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. And this is the first message in the series, Push. And um, I want to preach on the title, I Got My Strength Back. Come on, all my weak witnesses out there, those of you that just feel like you've just been falling up under the pressure, you, you ought to feel rejuvenated just by that sermon title and just say, I got my strength back. I want to preach, I got my strength back. Today, I want to look at 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. I'm in the New King James Version, and it says this. It says, now David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But here it is. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. I got my strength back. David got his strength back. He was weakened by what happened. But David got his strength back. Touch your neighbor, psych. Speak to your neighbor with your mask on and say, I got my strength back. <laughs> right? Text somebody and say, I got my strength back. All right. Y'all and I like to have fun and games. Now, before verse six, something happened. And um, Minister Cass that preached for us uh, earlier in the month, he talked about going over to the other side and rejection from the other side. Now, right before this, um, you know, David's on the run from Saul. And so David and his army try to go align themselves with the Philistine army. And the Philistine army basically rejects David. And it's good that, that they rejected David and his men because they were about to go into battle with the Israelites, which is David's own people. And so David and his army they didn't know that they were just going to help them fight but I know at the end of the day that David was glad um, that they got rejected because he didn't have to find himself in the battle against his own people now for David to go to the Philistine army this isn't something that he sought the Lord on this had nothing to do with God this was a David decision and guess what brothers and sisters uh, while we find ourselves in pandemic and, and in calamity there are going to be times within us where we just going to want to go do something Right. We just going to want to align ourselves with something because because we're on the run from what's going on in our society. Right. We feel the pressure. And sometimes you just want to try something. You want to go to something and you want to do something. But look, can I just give you some advice? Seek God first. All right. Seek God first on what he wants you to do, because God is still speaking in the midst of chaos. Come on. God can speak to chaos. Right. And so David and his men, um, they get rejected by the Philistine army. And so now David and his men, they take their two, three day journey back to Ziglag. And when they get back there, they find that the Malachites had come in and raided. And now they had taken the people's children. They had taken these men's wives to include David's wives. So now they're in a situation, brothers and sisters, where they come back home and home don't look like home home is lying waste they don't hear the running of their children they don't get the greeting from their wives they don't get any of this they come home is desolate it's been raided and nothing is there and the bible tells his brothers and sisters that they wept till they couldn't weep anymore can you imagine these grown men coming back? Basically, they wept till there was no strength left. They wept till they were actually just weak, brothers and sisters. And so all the power had left them. Why? Because when they look around, nothing's the same. It's almost like we just went away. And when we come back, what did we step into? What just happened? And when I think about 2020, I think the first question that comes to mind to me is what just happened? I crossed over into 2020 after celebrating in church, after having visions of what's going to happen, prophesying, even the year started out all right. But now we're in what just happened. In the same way that David and his armies cried and they wept and they were at a place where they felt like they had no strength. They were probably 
bitter. They probably felt powerless. I believe that's where we are now because it almost seems like the year keeps getting worse. As a matter of fact, you, you, you're like me. You're trying not to be pessimistic and say, well, I wonder who going to die next. I wonder who the cops going to kill next. I, I know you're trying not to go there and you're trying to be faith filled like me. But right, right. When the sneak tip and quiet, you've probably asked those questions. Who have, I wonder if the case is going to rise next. I wonder if the next uh, semester of school is going to be at home. Like you're trying not to be that way. But when you walk into something and the only thing you can think is what happened and it keeps getting worse. It it makes you wonder. And so it seems like this year, brothers and sisters, has zapped many of us. It almost seems like we keep losing. Um, it almost seems like we're, 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 in, we're, we're in jeopardy of just losing. And we're wondering where the winds are. As a, as a race of blacks, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm tired of, of crying over the senseless and systematically racial injustices that are plagued upon us in policing, right? In the healthcare system, in the workforce, in the financial system. Look, I, I'm tired of every day I wake up something else on the news to bring me down, something else in the news to make me cry, to give me a headache, to, to, to make me feel so bad. It's like, I'm losing strength as, as a nation. We're tired of political party fights that at times seems like they're fighting more for them than they are for us. I don't care if it's the Democratic Party or the Republican Party or whatever party. It seems like they're really for them and they're not for us. I'm tired uh, of this. But at the end of the day, guess what? We got to push to the voting polls. Yeah, we still got to vote. We got to find a candidate, find out that they're for us. They're no perfect ones, but we still have to vote. But even in the midst of pushing to vote, we're weakened by what it seems like our political party stands for. Look, we're weak from trying to beat teachers and workers and parents and husbands and wives all at the same time. We're weakened from trying to, to do all of this because you know what? The pandemic and the quarantine has called us to bring everything home. You know, home is a place when you leave work you come home from peace when you leave the rest of your the world and your crazy friends that ain't really your friends but you still hang out with them anyway at least you come home and you get some peace right your kids go to school they get taught that's their business that's their drama you come home and deal with what you got to deal with their work you go to work and you try to leave work at work but when you come home it's a place of peace nah Everything is home. Your work is at home school is get is at home the drama is at home right it just seems like pressure 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 you know we're, we're saddened to see that you know people are starting now to get evicted again and i was watching it on tv it's just so much pressure brothers and sisters and so like david and his men man many of us are are are, are crying we may not be crying literal literal tears but we're in a place where we feel like what happened like man we just turned around into 2020 no, into 2020 and now here we are like without strength but here's the thing David finds his strength in God and, and you know David's pushing here and I'm going to teach us how to push but what I like about this story is that the playing field was level it's not that David's men's wives and children were just taken and, 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 and he was there to be able to look and say, oh, wow, this is a sad situation. No, the playing field was leveled for all of us. So this message is good for me and for you and for everyone, because guess what? We're all suffering at the same time. And so what makes this uh, 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 a pressure point for David um, is the fact that the playing field is leveled. He and his family and everyone else, they're all um, um, experienced the symptoms together. They all experienced a tragedy together. Right. And then to top it all off, David's own people are considering stoning him. So they're blaming him for it. And then because David didn't seek God about going to the Philistine army, David has to wonder to himself, did this happen because I didn't seek God? This is real, brothers and sisters. I hope I'm all up in your Kool-Aid and got the flavor because have you ever thought about some of the stuff that's going on this year and wonder like, I wonder if this happened because we, you know, we didn't seek God. I want, I wonder why this is happening, right? Some of the same questions. Are you in what's going on now and you find that 
Some people are against you, blaming you about certain things that are going on now. I don't care whether it's financially, relationally, maybe on your job, they're blaming you for stuff. And you're thinking like, yo, we're all affected by this together. And there are some implications out of what's going on with this pandemic that just happen to be affecting us all. Maybe life is just happening this way and God's setting this up for a greater purpose that none of us knows about. I don't know about, but the only thing that we're required to do is push because whatever God has for us is on the other side of this. So maybe David felt all of this, but at the end of the day, he still has to push. And guess what? Whether you feel like this has happened to us as a nation or as a world um, because we don't we're not listening to God. Uh, if you think it's something that you've done, if you feel like you're getting blamed for stuff, it's all pressure. It's all pain. But my encouragement for you is to push in order to push, brothers and sisters. You got to get your strength back. So regardless of what went on, the Bible says that David got strength in the Lord his God or some translation says David encouraged himself in the Lord his God well how do I get my strength back this is the first part of the series how do I get my strength back here's what David did David positioned himself to be used by God you have to position yourself to be used by God here it is it says but David strengthened himself but David, we can stop right there because there's no pushing without a person to do the pushing, right? You, you can't exclude yourself out of this, right? We want to go forward, but some of us are so tired and weakened by what's going on. Man, you almost just want to sit back and leave it up to somebody else. Or you've prayed prayers, God do something. God just handle it. I've heard people say, I wish the rapture, I wish it would just come, come right now. Like we want to take ourselves out of the equation, but David, he had to position himself. Look, I'm telling you, but you, you're going to have to position yourself. There's no pushing without you. God's going to do some stuff in you, but there's no pushing without you. David strengthened himself. He encouraged himself. He, he had to become strong. He had to be courageous. David had to be firm. How, how do you position yourself? David decided to stay planted or to get himself back in place. Man, it was easy for David to get out of place, to, to pluck himself out of that situation. David could have started running. He could have gathered a few things and said, look, I know y'all thinking about stoning me. Man, I should have sought God before I went into this, even though it happened to me. David could have just plucked himself. He could have just removed himself. But in order for David to get strengthened, David had to position himself. He had to stay right where he was because brothers and sisters outside of God, the second most important thing you need to push is you. Outside of God, the second most important thing you need to push is you. There is no pushing without you. <laughs> the doctors c c didn't push Amani out. I didn't push Amani out. They all and me encouraged my wife to push Amani out. I don't know what's on the other side of your pain. I don't know what relationally God has for you. I don't know what financially God has for you. I don't know what he has for you by way of some business plans, ventures, or some, some spiritual that you're embarking on. But what I do know, it's going to be not just God, it's going to be God in you and God through you. And if you're going to get to the place of victory and of win and of overcoming that God has for you, you got to push. You You've got to anchor yourself and position yourself in God. Yep, but God, but but you. God needs you to be in there. So God does it through you. And you need to understand, you can't take you out the picture of your own purpose and destiny and expect fruit. I'm going to say it again. You can't take you out of the picture of your own purpose and destiny and expect fruit. 
Brothers and sisters, David is on his way, you know, to being king. You know, he, he's already killed Goliath. David is known for defeating armies. And David knows because he's been anointed, this isn't the end for him. But he can't pluck himself out or remove himself and expect to reach his destiny. You can't either. The best thing that you can do in this moment is stand. I like Ephesians. After you've done all to stand, stand. You've got to position yourself in God and say no matter how hard it is no matter how many blows I take uh, no matter how uh, uh, crazy the circumstances are I've got to stay right where I am and before David could get strengthened by the Lord and all of that David first of all had to make a decision to stay I'm gonna be positioned right here what am I asking you to do? I'm asking you to stay. Now you can say, Pastor, it's easy for us to stay. You know, we kind of on isolation. We in quarantine. Mm -mm. Man, you, you could already allowed your mind to leave and go to a different place, right? Spiritually, you could have already given up. So don't act like you, you can't uh, start the process of moving away from destiny and purpose and from God just because you're mostly in the house. No, your mind and your spiritually you could already be gone. I'm asking you to reel it back in. I'm asking you to get your mind back. Renew your mind through the word of God and the things of God. I'm asking you spiritually to come back. You ain't been online in the church. Man, get back up in here and start going to church. Get in your words. Start praying again, right? Start reading your Bible, listening to music. You got to tell yourself, I got to stay right here because I can't get there if there's no me here can't get there if there's no me here. So me has to stand and make a decision to stay in God and know that God through me, a weak me, a crying me, a frustrated me, a confused me can still get to the place that God has for me. Woo. David counted himself in even after a knockdown. Man, you ever had a knockdown and you just counted yourself out? He's like, man, I don't, I don't want to get back. David counted himself in. And here's what he had to realize. This is good for you. That a moment of misery doesn't decide your destiny. Whew. A moment of misery does not decide your destiny. So whether David felt miserable about thinking this is my fault because I should have consulted God before I went to the Philistine camp uh, about the people stoning him. Whatever he felt, a moment of misery does not decide your destiny. I don't care if you messed up or just life is just messed up because it does what it does. That is not the decision of your destiny. You want to decide your destiny? Decide to stand. You want to decide your destiny? Say, I'm going to stay put. I'm going to be here and I'm going to allow myself to be strengthened so that I can push. Brothers and sisters, positioning is everything if you're going to push. Positioning is everything if you're going to push. Woo! I got my strength back. How do I get my strength back? Man, I got to position myself in God. If I'm going to get strong, I got to be right here. Let me give you number two. How can I be strengthened? How can I get my strength fat back? Put your faith in God. David put his faith in, the, in God. It said not only did David strengthen himself in the Lord, he put his faith in God. He strengthened or became strong in God. And this is interesting because the first part of the scripture says that David was distressed, but that same David that was distressed was also strengthened, right? What, 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 what separates the truth? What separates the two? God. He was really distressed. He was really strengthened, but God made the difference. Now, now I want to talk about the fact that he was really distressed and really strengthened this godly person because David felt real pain about what he was going through, but he also felt real power about uh, uh, who would help him through. As powerful and as authoritative as David was in God, it didn't stop him from feeling the real effects of life's low moments. And I need you to understand this uh, as you prepare to get your strength back so that you can push. Don't feel bad about the fact that you're feeling the effects of life's low moments. We're not just reading the text about David encouraged himself. David strengthened himself. 
the text said that he was distressed. Yeah, don't 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 beat yourself up or or, or let the super saints tell you. You, you 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 don't need to feel that way. Just trust God. Trust God, but you're gonna feel some sort of way. Every time another black young man or young woman gets shot, you're gonna feel some sort of way. Six months later, no justice for Breonna Taylor, you're gonna feel some sort of way, right? Right. When you're fighting, doing, doing all you can to keep your, keep your home and, and now those evictions are coming back, you're going to feel some sort of way. As we start going through this school year, I know you've decorated your child's little work area for school, nice and all that, and you got your computer and you posted some nice pictures this week, ready for school, but, but about a month or so into it, you can be pulling your hair out, pulling their hair out, dragging them outside. Oh yeah, you're going to feel some sort of way, but guess what? You can feel that way, but know that you can feel strong at the same time it's all right I don't care how authoritative or how powerful you are in God everyone can go there life slow moments can get to you but you can have high moments in God if you strengthen yourself in the Lord see David had everything around him to drain him uh, David the Bible says found strength in the Lord but David could have found anger David could have found defeat David could have found depression. David could have found hopelessness. David could have found faithlessness. And the Bible says that a very distressed David found strength. Whew. He had all those other things easily around him that he could have picked up. And those could have been the way that he decided to move forward. But he found strength, but he found it in the Lord. And see, David could have David could have went some other routes. Y'all know David. David killed Goliath. David killed the lion. He killed the bear. Uh, D D David's known for uh, uh, his army killing. D David's good. David knew strategy, right? So he could have found strength in a strategy. I'm gonna get the Malachites back. David had men, so he could have found strength in his numbers. I I, I know we lost here, but look at the numbers of uh, uh, of men that I have. Um, David knew how to kill giants, but the ability to do all that David did, listen to this, was from God. David had all of that, but the ability to do all of that came from God. Let me tell you what. I know you got strategy. I know you got a great mind. Some of you may got got a few dollars in your bank. I know there's a whole lot of things that you can do to to find strength. But whatever you're good at, whatever you're able to do, whatever you're able to win in and conquer it underneath all of that. God gave you the ability to be able to do that. And watch when you can't do all of that or collect from all of that or receive the benefits from all of that. You know who you can still receive from? the Lord. Oh, yes. You can still receive from the Lord. That's why when everything else fails and everything else weakens you and seeks to destroy you, you can still be strengthened because God ain't going nowhere. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness. Look, you can always count on God to strengthen you. David found strength in the Lord. And so this is important, brothers and sisters, because regardless of what you are pushing and how you've planned to push, you won't succeed without God. So even as I talk about pushing and getting your strength back, you have no strength, no real strength other than the strength that God can provide. It, it, it's a it's a never ending strength. It's an always abounding strength that exceeds our ability but we just have to put our trust in him. Let me just tell you this as I move to my next point. When you put your faith in God, when you trust in God for your strength, it won't stop you from feeling overwhelmed. It will just give you the assurance that you will overcome. <laughs> when you put your trust in God and your faith in God, it won't stop you from feeling overwhelmed. But it will give you the insurance that you can overcome, which means, brothers and sisters, you can feel weak and you can feel worn, but you can also feel that you're going to win at the same time. And that's my encouragement for you. I can't ask you not to feel overwhelmed. I can't say, don't let it bother you, baby. Don't 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 be disturbed by that. Don't 
That's normal. Those are normal feelings of emotions. You're going to get down. But what I'm saying is when you put your faith in the Lord, you can feel overwhelmed, but know that you're going to overcome at the same time. And just knowing that you are going to overcome is going to make you push, right? <laughs> I'm feeling distraught by this. <laughs> this society has brought me to tears. But I'm going to push anyway because I already know I'm, I'm going to overcome. Look, 2,000 years ago on the cross, he already gave me the ability to overcome. So even though I don't feel strong, I don't even feel spiritual. I don't even know if my prayers are working. I don't know if it's this church stuff is working. I still know that I'm going to overcome. And because I know I'm going to overcome, it's worth the push because something is on the other side of this. Woo! David strengthened himself in the Lord. How do you go from pain to push? How do you go from being distressed to being strengthened? The Lord. It's the Lord. Lastly, brothers and sisters, how do you get your strength back? You get your strength back, brothers and sisters. You got to position yourself to be used by God. Uh, you got to put your faith in God. And then here's the last thing, brothers and sisters. Um, in order to get your strength back, you got to have a personal relationship with God. David strengthened himself, chop it up, in the Lord, chop it up, his God. <laughs> it wasn't just a God, it was his God, a personal relationship with God. I made a note here and I said, I like that God was still his God regardless of the tragedy. Did you hear what I said? I like that God was still his God, regardless of the tragedy, because, you know, when God don't come through, when God don't do what his word said he would do, or we feel like he dropped the promise. Sometimes he ain't your God. Let me get some real witnesses in here. Sometimes he ain't your God. Sometimes you're not feeling him. But even though his family members and his kids had been taken um, into captivity, they hadn't got killed. Everyone just got taken away and the people thought of stoning him. God was no less his God. He was in a crazy moment, but God was still his God. Y'all remember when Jesus was on the cross bearing the sins of the world before he said, why have you forsaken me in that moment of hurt and pain? You remember what his first words were? My God, my God. Notice with David and even with Jesus at a moment of turmoil and tragedy where you just feel like you're being forsaken or where is God? God was no less their God, no less David's God. And I got a question, brothers and sisters, when life doesn't treat you well, is God still your God? Whew. When life doesn't treat you well, is God still your God? Because the reason why David was able to get his strength back is because he had a personal relationship with God. Even though what he looked at didn't look like God and it looked like it was absent from God, this was a reflexive thing that he did. It was almost like, but because I got God, I got to go to my go-to. Right. See, if you don't got God, you ain't got nothing to go to. And man, my prayers go out to people that ain't got a relationship with God. But he went. He, he had to go to his go to. And so when you find yourself going through, even though you're frustrated and it seems like God can't be in it because it's so bad. Please go to your go to. But it's your go to because you got a relationship and you have a habit of going to him in the good times and the bad times. I'm not talking about you wait till life crumble, Father, in the name of Jesus. No, I'm talking about in the good times when life is well and you're prosperous and your health and your relationships are good. You got a track record of going to God because it prepares you for the low times when you feel like you need God the most. You want to be able to go to your go to so that you can find strength. Because, you know, we get to the point where we feel like, man, if God is my God, how can he allow all this stuff? To happen. How could God allow me to go through these things? And see, here, here's how we know uh, that, 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 that God is our God. Here's how you know that you have a personal relationship with God. Even though you're in it, you get a sense that God is taking you through it. You know, as he's taking it through, it doesn't mean that you don't feel what's going on. But you can tell when your relationship with God is really flowing because it's like I'm in it. But I feel God taking me through it. Here's the proof. They're thinking about stoning David. 
David comes back, everybody's gone. David isn't running. David didn't commit suicide. David is going through in his emotions. He cried along everyone else, but David's still standing. Only a relationship with your God and my God is going to is, is going to allow you to, 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 to continue to allow God to take you through it while you're in it, realizing that God is with you with all that pressure and with all that pain. David felt a sense that he still had God. And the only way you can feel that sense that you still have God is because you have a habit of connecting with him on a regular basis. I got a question. Where is God when you're going through? We're talking about having a relationship. Where is God when you're going through? Psalms 46 one says he's an ever present help in the time of need. But your ability to see him that way and be strengthened by him, because we're talking about getting my strength back during trouble is based on your commitment to connection. This point of tragedy for David wasn't a time to disconnect from God. Even though he didn't seek God and go into the Philistine camp, David had no less of a connection with God. And while the people thought of stoning him and while he's in tears and while he has to think about his own wives of being taken away, David felt no less connected with God. And David was able to gain strength because through that connection, David was able to rise up and have strength in God. David encouraged himself in the relationship and the connection that he had with God. I got my strength back. Look, if you felt low before the day, if you felt tired, you feel weak, and there's going to be more stuff to make you feel low and tired and weak and all that. I pray that you'll get your strength back. I pray that you get it back, number one, because you're going to stay positioned in God, right? You're going to stay positioned in God. I ain't going nowhere. This is rough, but it ain't going to take me out. I ain't done till I'm done. Until I die, I'm going to stay positioned. But not only am I going to be positioned to push, but I'm going to put my faith in God. That's where my strength is going to come from. But then I'm going to have a personal relationship with God. I got my strength back and I'm going to maintain my strength because I got to go get back what was taken from me. That's where this story goes. That's where your story goes. You're going to get back what was taken from you. You might get back more. You might get back something different. I have no idea, but I do know that the call of God on my life from me to you is to tell you to keep pushing is to push. I got my strength back. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all that I have for today. Look, I'm talking to some people here. Um, you're, 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 you're lacking spiritual strength. And I'm talking about the fact that, man, you're weak, as the Bible says. Um, you're far from God because you've never got saved. You've never received God. Some of the stuff I'm talking about, put your faith in God and being positioned in God. Man, you're out of position. Like your faith is not in God. You haven't received him into your life. And I want you to receive Jesus Christ into your life. I want you to know him as your Lord and Savior. Because when you hit those low moments, you want to be like David and the rest of us and say, man, I, I found strength in the Lord. You want him to be your God. And he wants to be your God so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for you when you weren't even thinking about salvation. So that whosoever believeth on him will not perish but have everlasting life. If that's you and you haven't received Christ, you've watched this broadcast and you're thinking like, man, I, I've been really needing some strength. And I've tried it from stuff on the Internet, uh, in, in, in a bottle. I thought my money was going to be my strength. I thought people were going to be my strength. I realize I need God. I want you to get saved today. Uh, uh, if you're going to get saved, look, man, just open up your heart and just say, God, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me of my sins and repent of your sins. Turn away. Say, God, I turn away from anything that's not like you, anything that I've done, any habit, any behavior. It's not that I'm going to be perfect going forward, but God, I want to go forward with you. I want to go forward with your spirit inside of me, helping me to transform me to be just like you. I want to receive Christ today. I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ, believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I want to be saved. If that's you, um, you're going to see a number and an email come up after the service. You can email that email and say, look, I just got saved today. Um, um, please send me some information. You can call the line and talk it over with someone. But today is your day to get your strength back. So to my unsaved people, look, 
Your strength starts today. To my saved people that are watching today, look, you're getting your strength back today. You're getting encouraged today. And I hope that something that I said today encouraged you down to your soul. Yo, join me next week for the second part of Push. I love you. Y'all have a blessed Sunday. Peace. Thank you.